we always say free DOS is a small operating system, but how small is small? How small can you make free DOS and still have it be legitimately a version of DOS? Well, for that, we actually need to answer the question real quick about what is DOS? So I've said in other places, DOS is really just a, a place to run applications. Uh, it's not a formal definition like uh, Unix might be where there's a, or Linux where you've got a Linux standard base, for example, and that's really what defines a Linux install. But uh, with FreeDOS, it's really down to the kernel and a place to run programs. And so if you can bring the kernel up and you can run programs, then you're running a version of FreeDOS. So how small can we make it to still do that? So here I've got, just to test this, I've got a, a, a version of FreeDOS. I've installed FreeDOS 1.2. I've just done a base install. So there's not really much there. I've got my FDOS directory. Uh, and then of course it installed an autoexec.bat, a command com, uh, the FD config sys, and the kernel sys. That's the actual kernel file there. But I've got two other directories in there. One of them is, uh, I downloaded a little bit of source code, and we'll look at that in a second, but I've also grabbed a copy of VisiCalc. So why did I grab VisiCalc? Um, well, DOS is really just a place to run applications. And so as we pair stuff away, as we remove stuff from this FreeDOS 1.2 base installation, if I can still run VisiCalc, then we're still running DOS because DOS is just a place to run applications and VisiCalc is an application. So uh, there's VisiCalc right there. And so we'll exit here with the storage menu and then the quit menu and then yes. Uh, so uh, let's take a look here at that source directory. That'll, that'll give us some of our answers. Uh, you don't really need much for FreeDOS to come up. Technically, you just need to have the kernel come up and that's the kernel.sys. Uh, and then someplace to let you run commands, and that's command com. Uh, and uh, what about that FD config sys? What about that autoexec.bat? Well, let's real quick take a look at uh, the source code to, to get that answer. So let's go into uh, the source directory. So I've grabbed the source code for uh, freecom and the source code for the kernel. Uh, let's answer the question about FD config sys. So do you need an FD config sys file, or why isn't it a config sys file? Well, MS-DOS used config sys, and when people first started running FreeDOS, they would sometimes dual boot uh, their DOS system with FreeDOS. And so uh, people wanted a way to do that without messing up their MS-DOS config sys file. And so FreeDOS by default looks for an FD config sys uh, file first. So I know that by going into the kernel. There's a big directory here. Uh, and if I go into the kernel directory inside there, I've got a bunch of files. Let's go ahead and break it there because there's a file here called config.c. Now this is a very big file. It's 74k. I can't even bring it up in the standard editor. So if I bring up config.c, uh, that's that's too big. I get an error. Uh, so that's okay. We'll break out of that. Uh, really what I wanted to do is as we look at that, uh, what is the kernel trying to load? Well, it's trying to load a config sys file. So let's do find on uh, config.sys in that uh, config.c file. And you can see here, these are all the instances of config sys, including FD config sys. And uh, without loading up the source code, you can see even just by the order of uh, what's showing up in the source code, uh, the kernel is gonna first try to read FD config.sys. And if it can't find that, it's gonna find uh, config.sys. So that's, that's what uh, FreeDOS is bringing up. Uh, it's going to try and look for that FD config sys and config sys. Now, what's in FD config sys? Let's go back to the directory. And what's in this FD config sys? Type FD config .sys. And so you see, I got a bunch of statements in here, but the most important one uh, is uh, towards the bottom, actually at the bottom line, where it actually is uh, loading the shell. And so that's what's going to load. Uh, the command com shell. Now, if that line doesn't exist, it's going to try and start its own version of the command com, just making a guess as to where it is. Uh, but we could, uh, uh, by default, it's going to look for that, that shell equals line. Now, when command com comes up, it's going to look for an autoexec.bat file. Uh, or you see there's a slash p at the end of the, that line. 
and that tells it it's a permanent shell and if you uh, uh, you can also give it a file uh, option there so you, you can also see in some other uh, installs like the uh, freedos 1.3 release candidates uh, we're, we're going to FD auto dot bat it's exactly the same file it's just that you'll see in the uh, config sys line or the FD config sys line uh, you'll see uh, uh, there's a slash p option in there that's actually telling you uh, telling it uh, where to find uh, the auto exec bat and it's telling it to look for an fd auto dot bat but yeah it's going to be looking for that auto exec dot bat uh, now what if we didn't have uh, something that that told uh, freedos where to find the command com and it just had to make a guess what files are going to try and load on its own well let's go into the uh, source directory again and let's go into the freecom source code and you can see here there's a bunch of files and most importantly there's a file called config.h it's not very big let's go ahead and uh, bring that up in the editor yeah that's fine uh, so uh, uh, if we go down a little bit you'll see that there's a um, uh, there's a line here where it says let's define autoexec.bat and it's going to be looking for uh, this double backslash just because that's an escape character so really it's looking for in the root directory a file called autoexec.bat so if you don't tell freecom uh, what the autoexec bat file is it'll just look for it as a slash autoexec.bat but those files it turns out autoexec.bat and config sys uh, uh, don't really need to be on the system so let's go ahead and exit this and let's look at um, Let's let's start by uh, by deleting autoexec.bat, and let's delete uh, fdconfig.sys. And so now I'm left with a, a directory that just has command com and kernel sys. Uh, and let's go ahead and reboot the computer. And so as I do that, it's going to come up without uh, config sys. And uh, it's going to immediately start uh, auto uh, uh, the command com, and there it is. Freecom is now asking for the date because it doesn't have an autoexec.bat. So the first thing it's going to do is say, "Well, let's just go ahead and prompt for the date and the time," and then uh, I'm left with a command prompt. And so we can still uh, bring up uh, FreeDOS in that case. And in fact, if I go to VisiCalc, I can still run VisiCalc. Right. So there it is. So. I don't need autoexec.bat and I don't need config sys to have a working DOS system. I obviously don't have really anything else. My my environment is very small. Uh, I don't have any aliases loaded. Uh, oops. Uh, so I don't have any aliases loaded because all that would have been in my uh, autoexec.bat. So let's look into that fdos directory. That's where uh, freedos uh, installs all of its extra uh, files. And you can see here I've got a bunch of different uh, directories uh, packages help doc bin app info nls cpi and temp so uh and probably the most important one in here is bin so if we go into the bin directory uh, you can see i've got 136 uh, programs and uh, these are all the external commands to freedos so uh, in any DOS system, you have a combination of internal commands and external commands. Internal commands means that uh, that's part of the command com shell itself. And so you've got things like CD, and echo, and dir, and things like that. And then you have uh, external commands that'll have things like uh, del tree, uh, things like that. So uh, we can do uh, the directory here and we can see a little bit more by using a wide. Uh, and uh, the one I wanted to point out, I can't even see on screen here. And so I'll just do a directory on everything that starts with a D. Uh, and so you can see I've got uh, a del tree.com there in the middle of the list. And so that's going to allow me to delete uh, some files. And so let's go ahead, back up one directory. And uh, let's do a, a del tree on packages. I, do I need packages? No, what's in packages? So packages is just a list of the packages that I have installed. That's just part of the FreeDOS uh, system. And so let's del tree packages. Now this command's not going to work, but that's okay. Right? Why didn't it work? Because <laughs> that external command is not in my path. So let's go ahead and set my path to cfdos bin. 
Uh, now I can do del tree packages. Uh, and so now I've deleted my packages. Uh, help, what's in the help directory? Well, it's all my uh, documentation files are gonna help me out with uh, learning how to use the different parts of uh, FreeDOS. And if I really wanted to pare it down, I could do a del tree on help. And doc, what's in my documentation? Well, uh, documentation, it's just that. All the, the readmes and everything else for uh, the different packages that got installed as part of FreeDOS. So yeah, if I wanted to pare it down, I don't necessarily need to have documentation. Del tree doc. Uh, let's hang on to the bin directory for a second. And uh, what's in app info? App info stores all of the LSM files. That originally was called a Linux software map, and that's what we use to describe the different packages in FreeDOS. And in fact, if you do a type on um, the, uh, uh, oops, I forgot what directory it was. So do a type on app info, uh, let's say xcopy.lsm, you'll see uh, this is a uh, just a plain text file that uh, begins with the line begin three and ends with the line end. And then in the middle, it's got a whole bunch of key value pairs uh, separated by that colon. So title, version, things like that. So I don't need to have the app info directory if I really wanted to pare it down. So I'll del tree app info. Oops. And what else do I have? I've got an NLS directory. So that's going to store all of my uh, language files. And so you can see in here, I've got a bunch of files that uh, have extensions of .en, .es, .de. Uh, and the main uh, file name is uh, the name of a command. And so uh, each one of those files is a separate language file. Uh, if I do a, um, a type on NLS uh, xcopy.en, you'll see this is just a plain text file. And if you watch the video about the FreeDOS Kitten library, you'll understand how this uh, library works. But basically these are strings that the program is going to uh, print out. And, uh, there's a separate file for each language. So I don't need to have the NLS directory technically to be able to run my system. It just means that the programs won't be able to display languages or, or messages in other languages. So let's do a del tree on NLS. Oops. Now I'm really paring this down. Um, what's in CPI? Well, a bunch of files I don't need if I don't need to ha uh, use those video modes. So let's go ahead and delete. Uh, CPI. Oops, del tree CPI. Uh, and what's in temp? Well, temp is just a temp directory, and right now there shouldn't be anything in there. So we'll do uh, remove directory on temp. And that leaves uh, some uh, other files, uh, an MBR file, a BSS file, and a version.fdi. Turns out neither one of those, uh, version FDI is the version of the FreeDOS installer. Uh, none of these are files that we actually need, so let's go ahead and delete uh, boot.star and delete version.fdi. So I don't actually need that to boot my system. Uh, now let's go ahead and, uh, and reboot. Uh, and this won't actually work because the reboot is an alias. Uh, so we'll do an FDAPM, uh, warm boot, I think is the option to do that. And now it's going to go ahead and reboot my system and brought up the kernel. And then uh, kernel didn't have a config sys, so it didn't know what shell to load. So it just loaded uh, uh, the uh, command com by default. And can command com doesn't have an auto exec.bat, so it's prompting me for the time and the date. So yeah, I can bring up my system there and I can go back into the visit calc directory and I can run VC. So I can still run DOS at this point. So let's go ahead and quit that. Uh, and you can probably guess what's going on here. I don't actually even need the FDOS directory. So uh, you know, all I needed to do was to bring up the system, which is kernel sys and command com. So let's do uh, FDOS bin del tree on the FDOS directory and blow everything away from my original FreeDOS installation. And there it is. I've just taken the, uh, the very direct path of deleting everything that I've installed and I'm left with kernel.sys and command.com. And those are the two core files that I need. And then I've got the source directory 
uh, which as we know isn't really required because it's just something that I downloaded uh, and created myself and then visit calc directory let's go ahead and uh, reboot the system now I gotten rid of the um, uh, I've gotten rid of my uh, my tools so I'll go ahead and uh, reboot this uh, outside of the emulator and so again my kernel is going to come up and it doesn't have a config sys so it's going to ask uh, about uh, it's going to immediately load my uh, my auto exec or my uh, command, command com and command com doesn't have an auto exec dot bat so it's going to go ahead and prompt me for the date and the time and the system is able to come up and I can go into the visit calc directory and I can still run visit calc so yeah to run uh, to, to boot FreeDOS, what do you really need you only need to have kernel sys and command.com and everything else is I'll describe it as sort of support files so I hope that information was helpful uh, before I go let me uh, uh, thank everyone on patreon who's supporting me you really do make this channel happen and thank you very much for your support uh, some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level and I wanted to thank you here uh, visit our website at freedas.org join us on Facebook follow us on Twitter and consider supporting me on patreon thank you